Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to talk about authentication. Now, in a couple videos uh, previously on this channel, I've talked about uh, authentication and how if you're going to implement authentication in your app, which you probably should, most most web applications require authentication of some sort, you should absolutely, under no circumstances, write your own authentication. Uh, and usually I follow that up with, and I feel like I've done it at almost every job I've ever been at. Um, there are reasons for that, uh, but in this day and age, most of the time, if you're going to use authentication, uh, you should absolutely use a pre-built library um, because with just a couple lines of code, you can quickly and easily have OAuth set up in your application uh, and that's across pretty much all stacks. It doesn't matter if you're using Java or .NET or Python or Node.js, there's a package that does OAuth for you and can have you up and running, you know, again, just a couple of lines of code. Now you might need to uh, configure it slightly if you want to say only allow certain users from a specific domain to be able to access your application, but that's just configuration. Right, you don't have to write the code yourself. However, what if you're doing machine to machine authentication? Um, it's still frowned upon to have usernames and passwords. Um, you know, passwords are potentially easy to guess. You should generate them. But what if you could just have the tool generate them? Um, so that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, I'm going to show you the token based authentication that I built into. Uh, my tool thing runner which is an open source tool uh, i'll have that link down in the description below um, it's token based authentication because i don't want to do the whole oauth dance um, and realistically i didn't need all of the sophistication that something like uh, you know asp.net's uh, jotbear library uh, provides uh, jotbear is fantastic i've used it in other applications where i do want to use you know, open ID connect OAuth providers. Um, but that's not what this tool is. This so this is just tokens. Um, so let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's talk about what I've built. So there are really four components to this. Um, we have creating a token, we have revoking a token, because you need to be able to revoke a token in case it uh, leaks. Or if you're doing uh, you know, periodic refreshes, cycling of passwords, that sort of thing. Um, you need a way to revoke the old token once you've created the new one. And then obviously a way to use that token to authenticate. Uh, and then it's important for this tool to have an audit trail. So I'll show you that as well. So here we have, uh, actually let's go all the way up to the top of the file. And this is where we, uh, parse out the commands. So this tool has multiple commands that you can run at, at the, the CLI. Um, and it's specific, uh, we're, we're interested in the token command. So we go down to the run token command, which is actually where we were a second ago. You can see you can run things, token, and then you have two options, new or revoke. New creates a new token, revoke revokes a token. Uh, and then you provide a token name. This is essentially the username, uh, or you can think of it as a username. It's not actually used as part of the authentication scheme, but it's it's the friendly name that you use to refer to the token. Um, that way, you can you know list out tokens, see what what tokens are being used. Um, it's just a friendly name. It it made sense to me, so I added it. Um, when you create the token, basically. What we have to do is first we have to create the token and then we have to figure out some way of storing it. Now, this is basically a, a password. Um, so we should treat it the same way that we would treat a password. It doesn't make sense to just store the token directly in the database because what if the database gets compromised? Obviously, if the database gets compromised, you probably have bigger issues. Um, but we don't, we, we want to store this in a secure fashion because it is essentially a password. So we hash it, right? And actually in hindsight, now that I look at this code, maybe SHA-512 
was not the best way to hash it. If I really wanted to treat this like a password, I should use an actual password hashing algorithm, um, which the, the short, uh, the TLDR on those is basically it's a hashing algorithm uh, that hashes multiple, multiple times um, really quickly, but not too quickly because we want to slow down the bots that are trying to trying to crack these things. So anyway, SHA-512 is probably literally the minimum security I could do to, to protect this password. Um, and then we save that to the database. So save the hash token with the name that you've provided and for tracking purposes, when it was created. And then we write out to the screen the name that you provided and the actual token, not the hash. The hash is stored in the database, but the token is for you to see, and that's the last time that you see it. Uh, so you want to make sure that you save it somewhere, you know, password manager, that sort of thing, um, because the system actually doesn't know what the token is. Uh, only you do. So let's quickly look at revocation um, because there's some important points there. Uh, we don't want to just delete the token from the database because we do want to track if that token gets used after it's been revoked. And if it's deleted from the database, all we know is, hey, someone tried to use a token that didn't exist. We don't know if they tried to use a token that previously existed and is now expired. Um, so instead of uh, deleting, we set a revoked at time. And of course we, we save the changes. This is all C-sharp entity framework. Nothing, nothing fancy here. This should all look fairly familiar uh, to folks who are familiar with C-sharp. Um, all of these concepts will work even if you're not using C-sharp, but obviously this tool is using C-sharp. Uh, so that's creating a new token and then revoking a token. Let's look at actually using the token uh, in uh, the authentication flow. So first we have to start at the, uh, basically the, the startup um, area. Obviously this is not named startup.cs. Um, this app is, has some of its pieces moved around a little bit for reasons, uh, but this is essentially your, your startup uh, area, your startup.cs. Uh, if you're if you're going with that paradigm, uh, and the important parts here are add authentication, add authorization, and then down when you're registering your middlewares, use authentication and use authorization uh, in that order. And you know order matters with these middlewares just like it does uh, everywhere else. Uh, all any documentation that you see that talks about adding authentication and authorization of any sort to an ASP.NET Core app will tell you the proper order to have these, these, these pieces uh, show up. Um, but some, some keys to note here. I add authentication and then I add token. This is a method that I've uh, created and you can see static void add token in class configuration. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, but this add authorization is uh, not necessarily specific to this app, but it does, it serves a specific function. Basically, I want all endpoints to require author authorization by default. Uh, I don't want each endpoint to have to opt into requiring author uh, authentication uh, individually. I want across the board, every endpoint to require authorization. Uh, there, there's one exception to that, and actually on a separate branch, there's a second exception to that. Uh, I'm adding a UI to this tool, um, which has a, a an anonymous uh, view for um, monitoring. Um, but that's easy enough to do with dot allow anonymous on a on a minimal API, and if you're using uh, MVC style APIs, route based, uh, uh, sorry attribute based routing, um, you, it's just the allow anonymous attribute. Um, so that requires authentication on every endpoint unless you specifically allow anonymous. And then add token is kind of where the magic happens. And my mouse has decided to stop working on me. Let's try that again. So add token, 
we add a scheme and this is a method that's built into uh, the, the .NET uh, authentication and authorization pipeline with options and a handler. Options is actually empty. Uh, I just created uh, a subclass of authentication scheme options just in case I needed to add uh, something to it later on down the line. But right now, there's nothing special about that. Token authentication handler is where all the magic happens. And once again, my mouse has left me. Here we go. We'll just click on the tab. Um, this is a class that is instantiated via dependency injection, so you can add things to it. Uh, the base class requires these four for reasons. Um, I wanted the DB context because I want to do things like look up the token and save an audit trail. Uh, so uh, first off, we need to grab the token from the header. So we find the authorization header and grab a value, make sure that, that it starts with token space. And then uh, we grab, this is probably the laziest way I could have done it, but grab the actual token, the part after token space. Um, and now we have the token, but that's not we, what we have stored in the database. We have to hash it the same way we hashed it when we put it into the database uh, so that we can compare it. So we have convert to base64, SHA-512, blah, blah, blah. That's the same uh, way that we take the token, turn it into a hashed password so that we can now compare it to the database. So now we have our hash token. We can look up the token record, which is the, the record from the database. So database is just my entity framework context. Tokens is the DB set and single or default. I'm okay with finding a null. We'll see how I handle that a little bit later on. Um, but obviously bad things have happened if the token appears in the database multiple times. I'm pretty sure there's a, a unique constraint on that field, so that shouldn't happen anyway. But you know, obviously it's bad if there are multiple tokens in there uh, with this, or multiple records in there with the same token. So we find that token record. If it's not null, we're gonna do stuff with it. If it is null, we're just gonna say authenticate result dot no result. Why authenticate result dot no result? Well, because what if I do add authentic a different authentication scheme later on down the line? Maybe I do add jot bearer. I don't want to just say uh, it, the user is unauthenticated if this authentication handler fails, if they actually have a token that, that matches you know, the jot bear uh, scheme, for instance. So uh, rather than you, normally you do success or failure, but here I do success on success. But if, if this scheme doesn't actually match, then it's not failure, it's just no result. Okay, so if we, if on the other hand, uh, we do, we did find the token result. Well, now let's look a little bit further and see if it's valid, if it's been revoked, that sort of thing. First things first, we add that audit record. And if the token is valid, the result of the authentication is success. Otherwise, obviously it's revoked. Uh, token is valid, it's implemented down here, and it's literally just, does revoked at have a value? I suppose technically it should check to see if revoked at is uh, less than the current date, but I, that doesn't really matter. If there's a date in revoked at, it's revoked. Um, it's basically a flag value for these purposes. For reporting, you might wanna know when it was revoked, for validity of token, if it has a value, it has been revoked. So we've saved our, our audit record. And now if the token is valid, which is basically the same check here, uh, that's a relatively cheap check. So doing it twice doesn't really matter. Uh, we create a claims principle uh, and an authentication ticket. Uh, since we're not doing anything fancy with claims, uh, we don't really need anything fancy with claims. Uh, the only thing I add is the uh, token record 
uh, name field, which is the name that you provided on the command line. Uh, so if I created a token called deploy, name would end up with, with the value deploy. Uh, and this, this claim, uh, the name claim would have deploy in it. Uh, I think this is useful for like username. Uh, if we go back to uh, endpoints, and I think that's actually this is actually why I implemented this 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 first path. I wanted to see what your username was, and that's where this name property is where that claim shows up. So we create our claims, create a new claims identity with those claims and then create a new claims principle with that claims identity because once it's not enough we need to wrap the class and then we need to wrap it again then we need to wrap it in an authentication ticket and then finally we can say the result of authentication is successful and here is our authentication ticket um, indicating the principle that we've created and the scheme name, and that's that's basically this scheme, indicating that this authentication provider is what successfully authenticated the user. And that's basically it. I mean, realistically, uh, there are a few blog posts and, and that sort of thing, uh, resources online, describing how to do this authentication flow. Um, but this is probably the most succinct uh, way of doing it because it is very simple um, this is it's just taking a token and well we're giving it a name to save it but it's just a token and that's it there's no users involved there's no uh, oauth servers involved there's nothing like that so let's just make this super simple it's just a token we have a little bit of auditing that's honestly that's most of the code is, is saving the audit trail. Uh, but yeah, I built this a long time ago and I've been meaning to make this video about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned something from it. If you have questions about this, about authentication, about the, uh, the ASP.NET authentication uh, pipeline in general, uh, building custom authentication schemes, um, first of all, don't try to avoid it if you can, but if you can't, uh, and you have questions on it, go ahead and leave them down below. Um, I, I had fun learning about this. Uh, I, I wanted to do it the right way this time because I've done it the, the wrong way many, many times, just kind of hacked it in. Um, it turns out doing it the right way, even though there are a few hoops to jump through, actually pretty easy and straightforward. So, you know, whoever uh, built this actually knew what they were doing and it's pretty cool. Um, if you want to talk about Jot Bear, Happy to talk about JotBear. Uh, there are a few other uh, libraries and extension methods and, and authentication schemes uh, either based on JotBear or similar to JotBear, you know, like OIDC or there's a Google one. Happy to talk about those. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to what you want to see, what you want me to talk about. Uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you in the next video, which hopefully, hopefully I uh, won't be uh, as far out in the future as it's been since the previous demo video and this one. With any luck. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.